coming up on today's show. Elon Musk admits to dropping the ball on production ramp-up for the newest Model X variants as customer deliveries are pushed back. Ford CEO Jim Farley says Ford will severely punish dealerships who add massive markups to its electric vehicles by reducing their vehicle allocations. And as we approach Super Bowl Sunday in the US, a slew of new electric vehicle ads break cover. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. During its Q4 2020 earnings report and call at the start of last year, Tesla revealed the refreshed Tesla Model S and Model X, as well as the Plaid performance versions of the same. Re-engineered almost from the ground up, they included a brand new interior, including a landscape center touchscreen and controversial yoke steering wheel, as well as drivetrain, battery pack and HVAC improvements to boot. Tesla began deliveries of the all new Model S Plaids last summer, but to date hasn't delivered many Model X. Customers have been patiently waiting for their new cars, but this week Elon Musk confirmed in a series of tweets that Tesla is facing some issues with the production ramp up for the new Model X. The current bottleneck, according to Musk, who said that the Model X is the most complex passenger car ever, is the interior trim. If you are a Volvo fan, as several of us are at the channel, you'll be familiar with the Tuzlanda facility, home to one of Volvo's most iconic vehicles, the venerable Volvo 240. The 240 is long gone from its production lines, although an incredible number still survive on the roads nearly 30 years after ceasing production. But this week, Volvo announced a new chapter for the facility, committing to spending 10 billion kroner on turning the Gothenburg facility into a new EV manufacturing hub. At the heart of the investment is a major revamp to final assembly and paint shops, a brand new battery assembly facility and massive new casting machines designed to cast aluminium body panels for future EVs. It seems Tesla's leadership in mega casting is catching on as automakers seek to improve efficiency without sacrificing safety. And that's really cool. As Nissan readies itself to begin series production of its Aria electric SUV, it's also finding increasingly tough emissions regulations in many countries mean that it no longer can realistically continue internal combustion engine development. To that end, we learned this week via Nikkei Asia that Nissan is reportedly in the process of becoming the first Japanese automaker to end development of new gasoline engines in most markets around the world, continuing to improve existing gasoline engines but ultimately phasing them out as bans on new ICE vehicles come into effect. But there's a catch. The US. That's because the US government has yet to commit to a ban on internal combustion engine vehicles. Nissan reportedly plans to continue to develop and sell internal combustion engine pickups and SUVs for the foreseeable future in the US. For a company that helped lead on EV for so long, it's now really sad to see Nissan fall behind. During Stellantis's EV Day last year, we learned that Ram would be bringing an all-new electric pickup to market, making it the last of the big three pickup makers to bring a plug to the party. This week, Ram launched a new website called Ram Revolution, a portal through which it intends to share details of what's going on with its electric pickup truck development. We know from previous dropped hints that the Ram 1500 will be built on the STLA frame BEV platform, a platform that includes dual motors up to 500 miles or 804 kilometers of range and the same vehicle to X power backup capabilities as the Ford F-150 Lightning and Chevrolet Silverado EV. That's hardly a surprise given those two trucks are major rivals. But what we didn't expect was the news that a range extended version will also be offered at launch in 2024. It's a good idea to open up electrification to more customers, but I think many people will be upset about it. Think of the world's largest battery producers for electric vehicles, and you might be tempted to think of Tesla and its battery partner Panasonic. After all, Tesla is producing and selling more electric vehicles in most of the world 
than anyone else. But new data from SNE Research shows that for the fifth year running, Chinese firm Cattle, which also supplies Tesla with massive amounts of battery cells, sat at the top of the global electric vehicle battery market, producing a whopping 96.7 gigawatt hours of battery cells last year. That's equivalent to 32.6% of the total EV battery market. In second place came LG Energy Solutions, producing 30.2 gigawatt hours, equivalent to 20.3% of the market. Market. Panasonic came in third place with 36.1 gigawatt hours of produced cell capacity, equivalent to about 12.2% of the market. It may have been in production for just a year, but Hyundai has already announced some pretty big changes to the Ionic 5 for the 2023 model year in Europe. Noticeable changes include a switch from the 72.6 kilowatt hour version of battery packs found in European spec Ionic 5s to a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack found in North American models. Combined with a new battery thermal preconditioning feature that heats up the battery pack prior to rapid charging, as long as you've set a rapid charger as your destination, this should make rapid charging quicker and improve overall driving range. Ionic 5 customers in Europe can also now opt to get a digital center mirror in the cockpit, as well as digital side mirrors in place of optical ones. This should reduce drag and further improve efficiency. Sadly though, North American customers can't get these yet, as they're not legal. One of the ways Tesla managed to gain such a leg up on the competition in the EV marketplace was its unique approach to rolling out engineering improvements to vehicles as and when they were ready, not just when a new model year started. And this week, we learned that, thanks to following Tesla's lead, Ford has managed to slash the cost of producing each Mustang Mark E by $1,000 per car. Talking to Automotive News this week, Darren Palmer, Ford's general manager of battery electric vehicles, said that Ford's approach to the Mark E has been to execute continuous improvements to its vehicle design. For example, it's managed to reduce the number of components for the Mustang Mark E Frunk from 9 to 2, dramatically reducing complexity on the car's cooling system and also making heated seats a standard fit item across all models, because it was not only cheaper from a parts perspective, but it also kept customers happy. As part of a massive new hiring push at its facilities around the world, Tesla has published a short video on LinkedIn promoting its brand new Giga Berlin facility. Focusing exclusively on the paint shop, which Elon Musk has said is the most advanced in the world, the video shows production line validation vehicles going through the paint shop as Giga Berlin edges ever closer to the start of series production. Yet while Tesla's factory looks ready to go, unconfirmed media reports from Germany suggest that Tesla's facility will not be allowed to operate until mid-March at the earliest. This is because it's not yet finished getting approval for various safety precautions and environmental impacts from the local Brandenburg government. You might be wondering why Tesla Giga Berlin is taking so long, especially when Giga Texas is so close to completion. And the answer is pretty simple. Texas has far less red tape and is far less concerned with environmental protections. As we reported a week ago, California startup Aptera has been busy putting its beta cars through handling tests in recent weeks, and up to this point has maintained that deliveries would begin this year. But this week, many Aptera reservation holders, including myself and Winter Tashlin, noticed that our reservation delivery estimates have slipped back to somewhere between 2023 and 2024. Aptera says it's still on track to start deliveries this year, but I'm guessing it will only be for the very earliest of reservation holders. The news is going to be a disappointment for some, but honestly, we think it's something that was going to happen anyway. We can't think of a single startup in recent memory that's managed to deliver its vehicles exactly when it initially said it would. And having talked to Winter about this very topic, I think that we're both kind of glad that the delay is taking place, as it should give Aptera more time to refine designs and engineering before production gets underway. As the chip shortage has gotten worse and more companies have struggled to produce enough vehicles to keep up with demand, there's been a sharp rise in the number of auto dealerships adding impossible markups to new cars. In recent weeks, we've seen some Ford dealerships really go to town with the markups for the upcoming F-150 Lightning. Some dealerships have added $10,000, $20,000 or even $30,000 over list price for the first people to order them. But this week, Ford CEO Jim Farley reiterated Ford's displeasure with this behavior, essentially telling dealerships directly that 
any dealership caught adding unreasonable markups to any F-150 Lightning will deal with the repercussions. While auto dealer protection laws limit what Ford can do, the company says it will simply reduce the number of vehicles, aka allocations, that offending dealers get, essentially limiting the number of cars they will ultimately be able to sell. Ford says that about 10% of dealers have been charging markups, but hasn't said what it actually considers unreasonable in terms of them. As more and more Tesla owners gain access to Tesla's full self-driving beta software, we're seeing more and more examples of the system out and about in the real world, often in the form of video clips. Some of those clips are exemplary of the best parts of Tesla's technology, showcasing FSD beta help preventing accidents or keeping other road users safe. But in the past week, we've seen a fair number of truly scary videos come online showing the exact opposite. One this week showed a Tesla FSD beta system collide with a bollard, while another shows an FSD beta system veer suddenly towards a cyclist. A third shows the system failing to properly navigate busy intersections, often with potentially dangerous outcomes. We are not going to comment on our own views here, and that's for another video, but we do all feel it's a good time to remind folk that FSD beta, as Tesla explains, is not autonomous nor infallible. Anyone using it needs to use good judgment as when to use it and when not to turn it off, and their hands need to be on the wheel ready to intervene at every opportunity. And finally, it's Super Bowl Sunday this weekend in the US, which means lots of money, and I do mean lots of money, will be spent by companies seeking to advertise their products to the captive Super Bowl audience. As usual, there's a lot of car ads, and we've already got a sneak peek at some of them. As we mentioned in the show a few weeks ago, Kia is bringing a robotic dog to co-star alongside its EV6 in its Super Bowl slot, while Polestar promises its Super Bowl ad will be free of gimmicks, celebrities and animals, among other things. Meanwhile, BMW is teasing a Super Bowl slot for its iX electric SUV, featuring none other than Arnold Schwarzenegger playing the part of the god Zeus. But perhaps the one that got our attention most was an Austin Powers-themed spot from GM involving Dr. Evil and his henchmen. It's certainly a funny ad, but I think GM probably misses the irony of choosing Dr. Evil for this particular ad. Keep your eyes peeled for a special Super Bowl ad deconstruction with Matt Teske from Chargeway next week. And on that note, we are done for the day, so make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, do consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is super easy to make the switch, and if you do, you'll help wean yourself off dirty energy and onto clean, green power that will keep New Zealand beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week with more awesome content but until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kekete! See you next time.